needs a new name. Can I be Johnny Undercover? Because he's going inside the mob. You think an informant could get that close to me? I got in your gang and you barely know who I am. Now he's a made man. You have shown great Faza Gabu. Huh? And it's time to wear the wire. Oh, you hear that voice almost every day right here on Fox 5, but you might not know the man behind the mic is celebrated voiceover actor heard on TV shows and commercials across the nation, Joe Cipriano. And now he's telling how he went from small town radio announcer to major market voice. Here's the new book. It's called Living on Air. It's a very cool uh, photo there. Adventures in Broadcasting. Joe joins us now. Good to see you. Good morning. Great being here. This and is such a kick. Welcome home it. again. Yeah. So you and I kind of started out the same way doing radio mm -hmm. in high school. Mm -hmm. And then I got the call to go to a big station in Oil City, Pennsylvania, and you got the call to come to Washington, D.C. Go to Washington, D.C. So welcome D. home. Thank you How'd very much. Happen? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I was. I was 16 years old uh, when I started uh, on the air, you know, hung, hang, hanging around the radio station. I was 14, but I finally they hired me. And uh, I happened to send in a tape to, uh, to the radio station down here, and I was using the name on the air Tom Collins because nobody ever used the real name on the air. Right. So I was working as Tom Collins, but I was at another station uh, up in Hartford, Connecticut, where I, the signals crossed, so I had to use a different name. So I was Dave Donovan up there. I sent my Tom Collins tape down here to Washington, D.C. I got a call. They, they liked it. They wanted to hear a little bit more, maybe personality. So I sent them my Dave Donovan tape, you know, from WDRC. And um, I got a call a couple of weeks later. Tom Collins, you're one of three, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we'll be calling you back. The station up at Hartford calls me and says, you better call in this, this guy down in Washington. I called him. I go, hi, you left a message for me at DRC. He goes, yeah, Dave Donovan. <laughs> so, yeah, just want to let you know you're one of three well, candidates. So, so you so had a two and three chance when he to found get out, Yeah, I was two of the three. So <laughs> I, got the, I got the gig. Advantage you guys yeah, exactly, too, right? Yeah. So you were in D.C. for how many years? Uh, from about 75 to 81. And then yeah. headed west out to Los Angeles. Out to Los Angeles. And that was a thrill getting, uh, you know, I, I, I learned here. Uh, about voiceover, and I became aware of those big voices like Ernie Anderson and Danny Dark, who represented television networks, and I wanted to do that. And my wife, Anne, who co-wrote the book with me, also worked in broadcasting mm -hmm. here. And so we decided, you know, we'll move our broadcasting careers to Los Angeles so I can pursue uh, voiceover. And I happened to be on the air at, at this great radio station, KISS FM, one day in 1988, when the head of marketing for this brand new network called Fox was stuck in traffic on the 405 freeway and he's rolling over in his head i gotta come up with a new voice for this network and heard me on the air i was his companion in the car for an hour in traffic boy you and never he said, know do that you? guy that guy could do it and that was what 20 mm. something five six seven years ago you, you don't just do fox because you mm -hmm. do live award shows as well I is do. there a different challenge when it's live yeah and, and you know what what's great about doing live shows like the grammys and emmys is our background all of our backgrounds here in broadcasting when you're live on the air and you're used to that you have such a step up when it comes to doing the uh, emmys and grammys and it's so exciting to as we say crack that mic mm -hmm. and to say ladies and gentlemen welcome to the grammy awards i mean that's like come on extra pressure on you uh, yeah, there's there's pressure, but I think it's a kind of pressure that you embrace. I know I do, and I, I love it. It's absolutely great. And I've done game shows, and, you know, uh, it's just an exciting career. Comedians you know? will often tell us when we talk to them, when they run into people on the street, they'll say, say something funny, right. make us laugh. It's what you do. <laughs> do people have you talk? Do oh, they say, yes, uh, all oh, the time. throw us a favorite line or in two? In fact, you know, Ryan Seacrest, who's a good friend, he works uh, in radio still in Los Angeles, believe it or not. I don't know how and he And everything else in the world. But whenever I happen to see him somewhere and he's with friends, it's like, Joe, come over here, do The Simpsons. Just do The Simpsons. <laughs> It's like Sunday on an all-new Simpsons. Jeez, that's that's him. I mean, it's it's hilarious. radio people will never change. Will no, they? they never change. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, you're getting paid to do what you love, and you're getting paid to talk, mm -hmm. and you've got to have some great experiences along the way. What stands out for you over this story career? Well, you know what? I, I think what really um, uh, stands out for me are the people, the relationships along the way, and I have been so fortunate to meet mentors along the way, not only in broadcasting at that early age, 14 years of age, but people like Don LaFontaine who was the legendary voice of trailers in a world. I mean, he wrote that copy mm -hmm. and he delivered that. And it's meeting those kind of people and uh, those are the folks that give you inspiration and, and, you know, it's not a smooth ride voiceover, nor is broadcasting. There are a lot of ups and downs and in the book I, I talk about it being a roller coaster. And you need somebody there who um, can give you some words of wisdom when you're down.
It's always interesting because people always seem to relate to people when they're on top. They don't always realize what yeah. it takes to get there. Yeah, exactly. People might not always realize that people in radio know how to write as well. So you're going <laughs> to prove them wrong here. Exactly. Well. exactly. You're going to do a book signing tonight? Yeah, we're going to be at Clyde's Chevy Chase starting at 6 p.m. I hope all your viewers will, will come out. And I'm um, looking forward to it. We're going to have a good time. Fantastic, Joe. Party. Welcome back to Washington. Thank you. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks, and thanks for joining it. us. Good luck with the book. And we'll thanks. be listening to you. We'll certainly be hearing your voice. Excellent. Thanks. thanks. Joseph Brianna doing a fantastic job. <laughs> Sarah, back to you. All right. Just down the street, too, at Clyde's. He's going to be nearby. Come on down. Yeah. Well, most of the Fox 5 people. Sarah and Allison. Now back to Sarah and Allison. <laughs> Thank you. I know. I like hearing my voice, my name like that. From Joe, I do I too. All right. Okay. Time now is 920, coming up on 921 on this Wednesday. Coming up next, a kissing controversy. Should a school have suspended a six-year-old for kissing a classmate? Oh, interesting. This is an interesting story. We're going to talk more about it coming up on the other side of the break.